Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover an introduction to Amazon SQS or Simple Queue Service. Amazon Simple Queue Service or SQS is a highly available distributed queue system and acts as a buffer between the component producer and the consumer. SQS is a message queue service used by distributed applications to exchange messages through a polling model and it can be used to decouple sending and receiving components. It is fully managed and requires no administrative overhead and very little configuration. It offers a reliable, highly scalable hosted queue for storing messages in transit between applications. SQS provides a fault-tolerant, loosely coupled flexibility of distributed components of applications to send and receive without requiring each component to be concurrently available. It supports both encryption at rest and encryption in transit. SQS currently supports two types of queues. A standard queue, which provides high throughput, but best effort ordering and at least once delivery. Whereas FIFO queues provide exactly once delivery, first in first out delivery, however at a much lower throughput. We will cover the key differences between them in a separate video. In this demo, we are going to configure a simple queue service SQS queue and send and receive messages through console as well as command line. Let's navigate to the SQS console. Amazon SQS provides queues for high throughput system to system distributed messaging. It can be very helpful to build loosely coupled architectures. SQS allows producers to push messages to the queue. Messages are stored in the queue for the consumers to consume. Let's create our first SQS queue. We need to select a type for the queue. SQS supports two types of queues, standard and FIFO queues. Standard queues support unlimited throughput, at least once delivery and best effort ordering. FIFO queues guarantee exactly once delivery, first in first out delivery, however at a much lower throughput. You can choose the queue type depending upon your use case. For this demo, we would be selecting the standard queue. However, note, you can't change the queue type after you create the queue. Let's name the queue as JDemo queue. Let's deep dive into the configurations. Visibility timeout. Visibility timeout defines the period where SQS blocks the visibility of the message and prevents other consumers from receiving and processing that message. If the message is not deleted by the consumer before the visibility timeout, the message would be available for the other consumers to consume. The default value is 30 seconds and can range from 0 seconds to 12 hours. Message Retention Period SQS automatically deletes messages that have been in a queue for more than the maximum message retention period. The default retention period is 4 days and the range can be from a minute to 14 days. Delivery Delay helps postpone the delivery of the new messages to the consumer for a number of seconds. The default value is zero, that means the messages are delivered as they are received. And the range can be from zero seconds to 15 minutes. Maximum message size helps specify the message size. 
The range can be from 1 KB to 256 KB and the max is also 256 KB. Receive message wait time helps configure short or long polling. For a FIFO queue, you can additionally configure content-based deduplication to enable content-based duplication. The default setting however is disabled. Encryption SQS supports both encryption in transit and encryption at rest. Encryption in transit is enabled by default. SQS supports encryption at rest using default Amazon SQS key or using key management service or KMS. We will keep it enabled with encryption using the default SQS key. SQS access policy. Access policy is the SQS resource based policy. You can define the accounts, the users and the roles that can access the queue. The default policy only allows the queue owner to send and receive messages. And you can configure more refined fine grained access control using the advanced option. Let's keep it basic for now which should be good for our demo. Redrive allow policy specifies which source queues can access the dead letter queue. The redrive policy specifies the source queue, the dead letter queue and the conditions under which SQS moves messages from the former to the later if the consumer of the source queue fails to process the message after a specified number of times. Dead letter queues can be used to receive undeliverable messages. SQS supports dead letter queues or DLQ which other queues called source queues can target for messages that can't be processed successfully. Dead letter queues can be very helpful for debugging your applications or messaging system because they let you isolate unconsumed messages to determine why their processing didn't succeed. We are good with the configuration. Let's go ahead and create our first SQS queue. And the SQS queue has been successfully created. You can check the name, the type, the ARN and the endpoint URL. We will use the endpoint URL to interact with the queue. SNS subscriptions help configure SQS queue to receive messages from the SNS topic. Lambda triggers can be used to process messages in an SQS queue. Lambda event source mappings support both standard queues and FIFO queues. With Amazon SQS, you can offload tasks from one component of your application by sending them to the queue and processing them asynchronously. Dead letter queues can be configured to receive undeliverable messages. SQS is integrated with CloudWatch for monitoring. We can add additional tags to our queue. SQS supports resource-based access policy to configure permissions for other AWS services or other accounts to access SQS queue. SQS encryption is enabled and set to use the default SQS key. And we can configure the dead letter queue redrive tasks. Let's try to use our SQS queue to send and receive messages using the console. Let's use send message. Let's enter a sample text saying message from console in the message body. Let's keep the delivery delay to zero and send the message. Additionally, we can add message attributes as well, but this is good for now. Let's poll for messages. And we have received a message. The body match is our message with no attributes. 
details show the ID, the MD5 hash of the message body. Let's delete the messages from the queue. Let's try to push and receive messages using the CLI. We'll be using the cloud shell to push and receive the messages. Let's use the command AWS SQS send queue to send the messages. It takes the queue endpoint URL and the message body as the parameter. The push is successful and it returns the message unique ID and the message body MD5 hash. Let's now receive the messages. We'll use the AWS SQS receive message with the same endpoint URL with all the message attributes. And it returns the message ID, the MD5, the attributes if any, message body. It also returns the receipt handle which is the key to delete the message from the queue. Let's now delete the message using the AWS SQS delete message with the same endpoint URL and the receipt handle of the message from the previous message. And the command has been successfully executed. Let's try to run the receive command again and we do not receive any messages as we have cleared up the queue. So that's it for the SQS introduction demo. SQS can be a great service for building loosely coupled architectures. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.